Okay, let me present to you from Vision Mobile, Mr. Matos Kapitanakis, talking about the state of the developer nation. Thank you. So, uh, hi, I'm Matos. I'm the marketing manager of uh, Vision Mobile. And I'm here today to talk about the state of the developer nation, presenting some of the key insights from our latest developer economics uh, report. The latest report was published in mid-July 2013 and is available for free download at developereconomics.com. So before we get started, a few short words on the company. We are a mobile industry analyst firm uh, specializing in the app economy and developer ecosystems. Our two flagship products are developer economics, which we'll be discussing today, and Telco Economics, which is a series of strategic advisory services, uh, workshops and reports aimed at uh, largely telcos. Uh, there is also a large number of uh, free reports available on our website, visionmobile.com. So feel free to browse and discover lots of reports on uh, mobile trends as well as uh, market maps. Our clients include some of the largest names in the mobile industry. As you can see, uh, our clients include large handset OEMs like Nokia and BlackBerry, key telco operators like Telefonica, AT&T and Verizon, as well as some of the largest chipset vendors like Qualcomm and Intel. So let's get started with the developer economics. What exactly is that? It's a research series by Vision Mobile. Started out as an annual survey in 2010, and since then it's grown to be the largest, most global developer survey. The latest survey, which led to the uh, July report, was conducted in Q2 and queried over 6,000 mobile developers across 115 countries. Uh, making this the survey, the developer survey with the largest reach. So let's get started. Uh, developers today are faced with a large number of questions. So uh, questions on mobile platforms, questions on monetization, questions on developer tools. And these are the three areas uh, which I'm going to be discussing today. So in terms of mobile platforms, it's not just what's the uh, top mobile platform, but also what's the most lucrative ones. So if a developer wants to uh, create apps on a new platform, which one should they choose? I'm going to try and uh, give an answer to uh, these questions based on what other developers uh, have responded. So I'm going to be pre presenting some key stats and figures from the survey. Let's get started with mobile platforms. So what's, if you're a developer, what's your mobile platform mix? So it seems that uh, a lot of the uh, respondents from a survey, the average number of platforms uh, for each developer is around 2.9, showing an upward trend from the uh, uh, trend we've been seeing from 2010, uh, which was dropping and uh, uh, converging around just Android and iOS. And Q3 2013 is actually the first time we see uh, diversification. So developers on average are now using more mobile platforms. And let's find out which mobile platforms are the most popular. So as many of you would expect, uh, Android and iOS are the leading platforms. So this graph shows the uh, average number of developers using each of the platforms on a global scale. So as you can see, uh, Android and iOS uh, leads, but the third platform is actually HTML5. So that's ahead of both uh, Windows and uh, BlackBerry. Uh, you'll notice that the graph uh, also shows a historical comparison between the data released in the Q3 2013 versus the data released in Q1 
2013. So there is a six month gap. And as you can see, uh, HTML5 is here to stay. Is that the same across uh, the entire world? Well, regional mindshare is quite different from uh, continent to continent. Android, yes, is the same across all regions, but the use of iOS is much more pronounced in mature markets like Europe and North America. So developers from Europe and North America tend to use iOS to a larger extent than uh, developers in other regions. Uh, specifically in South America and Africa, iOS is not the second but the third uh, mobile platform of choice and HTML5 is actually the second most popular platform for developers in these regions. Let's zoom in on the uh, exactly that, the use of HTML5, because let's not forget that HTML5 is a technology stack, it's not a full platform in itself. So how are developers using this platform? Well, it seems the majority are going uh, direct to browsers, so they're building apps uh, either as web apps or through mobile websites. The remaining 40% are doing some sort of hybrid or uh, native type of apps through the use of cross-platform tools or through the use of uh, a platform-provided uh, framework uh, such as BlackBerry's WebWorks. Uh, we've talked about the, the mobile platforms today and what the situation is right now. Let's now talk about uh, which platforms mobile developers will be adopting in the future. So uh, the next graph presents what we call the developer intent share, which is the percent of developers uh, who are planning to adopt a platform. As you can see, iOS, Android and HTML are further uh, down the line and uh, well it makes sense of course because most developers are already using these platforms and the leading platforms in terms of intensure, so uh, the platforms which developers are likelier to adopt in the future are Windows and BlackBerry. You should pay close attention to Firefox OS and as well as Tizen. So despite the fact that there are uh, very few, if any, devices out there, uh, these two platforms have managed to uh, concentrate developer interest. So that's due to a, uh, mainly the HTML5 factor, which means that developers have the chance to uh, distribute their apps, which is uh, an ingredient missing from HTML5 right now. Uh, monetize their apps, so uh, monetization APIs are also a pain point for lots of HTML5 developers, as well as uh, these two platforms provide a unified development environment, which is again something missing from HTML5. Now this, uh, this side of the equation, developer interest, is uh, one side of network effects. So in order to be, be able to build network effects and create both developer and user interest, you need these two ingredients. What does network effects mean? Well, it means uh, more apps bring more users, more users attract new developers who create apps, and so on and so forth. It's a positive feedback loop, which right now is clearly in the favor of Android and iOS. So in order to be able to compete with uh, the two leading platforms, uh, the new uh, uh, challengers will have to get both sides of the coin. Right now, both uh, BlackBerry and Windows have the developer interest. So we have a lot of uh, developers interested in adopting the platform, but what's missing is the uh, sales base. So there are very few uh, devices of either platform out there. Uh, the counterpoint, uh, and it's an easy example to make, would be the BADA platform by Samsung, uh, which had quite a few uh, 
sales, so it was uh, constantly outselling uh, Windows Phone uh, in 2011 and 12, but uh, it failed mainly due to lack of developer interest. So let's move ahead and take a look at platform priorities. So it's not just a, uh, the number of platforms a developer uses concurrently, it's also the priorities. So what does that mean? What does a primary platform mean? Well, it means that it's the platform that gets most of the attention, both in terms of new apps or new features, or could even be the focus of a marketing campaign. So uh, we see a lot of stickers for uh, try out the new iOS or the new Android uh, app, but you don't see as many, if any, of, uh, for BlackBerry or uh, Windows. So let's take a look at how developers prioritize these platforms. So the graph shows the uh, developers from each of the platforms uh, in total and the green part at the bottom shows uh, the percentage of which developers uh, consider the platform to be their primary one. You can see that uh, around 50% of developers who are using Android consider it to be the uh, top platform, the, their primary platform. In this case, iOS is ahead of Android with around 60% of iOS developers uh, mentioning that this is their primary platform. Take a look at the Windows Phone and BlackBerry situation. So, of course, it makes sense that uh, for neither of these platforms uh, are considered primary by their developers, but uh, BlackBerry is clearly ahead of uh, Windows Phone in terms of interest, so it's used as both a primary and a secondary platform to a much greater extent than uh, Windows Phone. Let's now take a look at platform selection criteria. So if you're a de developer, which is the right platform for you? Uh, this graph represents the uh, top motivators for the developers of each platform. As you can see, speed and cost of development are the top motivator for all uh, developers, except for iOS. For iOS developers, it's actually revenue potential that's uh, the top attractor. In contrast, you can see that revenue potential is just the second uh, choice for both Android and BlackBerry 10 developers. Now, let's turn that around a bit on its head, and let's take a look not at platforms, but at developer needs. So the graph here presents various developer needs and the platform that developers more or less associate with the specific need. So for example, uh, developers who want to reach their target customers, want to get their apps discovered, who are interested in uh, revenues, uh, tend to use uh, iOS uh, on average more than other platforms. Uh, for developers who are interested in porting or documentation or community programs and, of course, open standards, iOS is the least favorite platform. Android is clearly ahead in platform APIs and uh, as well as the open standards support, which, again, uh, HTML5 is also uh, a strong platform for those who are interested in open standard support. So let's move away from platforms and let's take a look at different screens. So, uh, most developers today, of course, are doing apps for smartphones, but what about tablets and what about uh, TV? This graph represents uh, developer interest in different kinds of uh, screens. So you can see that over 90% of developers are doing apps for smartphones. But tablets are also in the mainstream, so right now around 70% uh, of developers on a global scale are doing apps for tablets. Where's TV? Well, it's just at 4%. So despite all the hype we have, despite uh, all the announcements and the buzz around smart TVs, it's actually a very small percentage of developers who are doing TV apps. 
uh, you'll also notice that there is a strong interest in uh, developing apps for TV in the future, which is promising. But the fact of the matter is that we had the same amount of interest in the six month ago survey, and that translated into 4%. So uh, the technology is out there. There's interest, but uh, it's a matter of uh, making the leap and spending time and money on doing apps for TV. And perhaps this is something that manufacturers should take note of. Let's now move ahead and talk about monetization. So, uh, which are the most lucrative platforms? Which are the uh, top revenue models? And both in uh, terms of uh, average revenues, as well as uh, the use for each platform. I'll give you a moment to admire our uh, artwork. So let's take a look at the top platforms in terms of revenues. Figure here is per up per month uh, revenue. This is an average across the globe, of course. Uh, in uh, on a regional scale, this would be quite different. As many of you would expect, iOS is the top platform in terms of monetization. What perhaps some of you might not have expected is that Android is in second place and is actually closing the gap with iOS. So. There are uh, a lot of parameters which have helped Android uh, in its quest to monetization. So we have uh, the Amazon App Store which helped uh, quite a bit, as well as of course the user segments which are now away from purely the price sensitive market and into other segments as well which are more lucrative and more likely to pay for apps. Uh, BlackBerry 10 is at the very bottom, but uh, this doesn't mean that BlackBerry is too bad in terms of monetization. It's still a new platform, and from what our data seems to suggest, it's right now it's primarily used by segments who are not interested in making money. So, uh, as we'll see later uh, on, it's primarily used by uh, hobbyists and explorers who are just interested in the next new thing and not uh, so much on monetization. It's interesting to note that uh, BlackBerry has been traditionally one of the strong platforms in monetization. So if uh, they manage to maintain their position in the market, this could rapidly change. Let's now take a look at revenue models. So is your revenue model uh, the same across uh, when using different mobile platforms? If it is, it shouldn't be. Let's take a look at the top revenue, uh, the top revenue models per platform. So, uh, for example, you can see that uh, most uh, iOS developers use paper downloads, whereas most Android developers uh, use advertising, which of course makes sense. For other platforms, uh, the split is uh, different. So, for example, for Windows Phone, we have an almost even uh, split between paper downloads and in-app advertising. Uh, take a good look at the top row, which is contract work and commissioned apps. That's also, of course, a revenue model. It's uh, being paid to do apps by a client. And as you can see, uh, the uh, platforms mostly using this revenue model are iOS and HTML5. Again, let's turn that around on its head and let's take a look at not per platform, but let's take a look at the total developers doing commissioned apps. So, as you can plainly see, uh, the largest percent of uh, developers doing commissioned work are iOS, followed by Android and HTML5. So this is closely linked to not just what developers want, but also what the clients want. So it's a matter of people who are looking to do a mobile strategy, focusing on this and prioritizing these platforms. So like we mentioned earlier, you'll see a lot of iOS and Android uh, QR codes, but not that many for uh, BlackBerry and Windows Phone. Uh, let's now take a look at the most lucrative revenue models. This is not from the latest, this is from the Q1 2013 
report, so it's uh, data from six months ago, but it's still uh, quite close to uh, the situation today. In terms of popularity, we have uh, advertising and paper downloads at around the uh, same level. So uh, there is, uh, as of the previous survey, there were 38% of developers using advertising versus 32 for paper downloads. What you should pay close attention to is the average revenue for each of these revenue models. So even though these two models are the most widely used, they actually are the ones that pay the uh, least amount of money. Uh, it's perhaps interesting to note that subscriptions are what pays the most. That doesn't mean though that developers can go out and try to do a subscription-based service. This is, uh, and this is represented also by the use of the model. Uh, subscriptions are mainly for large content publishers who have the content and the marketing behind it to support this type of uh, model. So, uh, let's move ahead and talk about developer tools. So, uh, as our data shows, a lot, uh, the majority of uh, developers are using at least one type of tool. And uh, also what's uh, interesting is that uh, we found that on average developers who use at least one uh, type of tool are making more money than those who don't. So let's see, first of all, which are the most uh, widely used uh, developer tool categories. User analytics is the top uh, choice for developers. So uh, companies li uh, tools like Flurry and Google Analytics are the most widely used. Developers are of course interested in knowing how their app is doing and how consumers are interacting with their app. And this is represented here. Uh, the second, third and fourth choice are cross-platform tools, push notifications and of course ad networks. Uh, despite a lot of hype, voice services, for example, is one of the least widely used uh, uh, category tools. This is the global uh, sample and it's very, very different when seeing this in terms of platforms. So let's take a look at what type of tools each platform's developers are using. So you can see, for example, that user analytics are more widely used by iOS developers, whereas ad networks are more used by Android and Windows Phone. This, of course, has to do also uh, with the monetization model. So if you remember from an earlier graph, advertising was one of the key revenue models for both Android and Windows Phone developers. It's uh, interesting to note here uh, that the average, uh, the most avid users of developer tools are iOS developers. So we have 92% uh, of iOS developers using at least one type of tool. And let's not forget that uh, the use of tools is also tied with average revenues. So, and also that uh, iOS developers tend to make the most money. So I think it's an uh, easy conclusion here. Uh, let's uh, see what the most popular tool categories are and the use of tools across not uh, mobile platforms but across the experience level of developers. So I think this trend speaks for itself. At the bottom we have the experience level of a developer. So you see clearly that the uh, more experienced the developer is, the more likely they are to be using a, uh, any sort of tool category and to a greater extent. Uh, some of you may notice that there is a uh, for specific uh, tool categories like for example crash reporting, there is a very very small drop off at the very right uh, hand side column. So the most experienced developers out of them all tend to use uh, in-house tools. So they've reached the point where they can do their own tool and not care about what the SDK economy has to offer. Now let's take a look at uh, developer motivations. So we did uh, talk about uh, developer motivations and the uh, platforms which are most closely linked to uh, each type of goal. 
let's now take a look at purely developer goals. So which is the prime motivator for all developers? It's not money, it's the fun factor. So even for developers who are mainly interested in making money, the fun of building an app and the sense of being creative is very important. So it's the common denominator for uh, all developers. It's the common denominator as a motivator. This is something which uh, people running developer programs should be uh, closely, um, should have a close focus on because uh, many of those tend to focus on uh, monetization or reach and uh, tend to forget the fun side of development. Let's now take a look very brief at uh, the different developer segments. So uh, we've devised a segmentation model breaking down the full developer population into eight distinct developer segments based not just on demographics, so app categories, uh, money made, country or uh, something like that, but mostly based on needs. So these are the eight uh, segments. The hexagons, uh, the size of each hexagon is linked to the size of the corresponding uh, developer segment. And we've clustered those uh, according to specific needs. So let's see the uh, cluster on the left uh, with the green, which are hunters and guns for hire. These guys are around uh, just over 40% of the whole developer population, but they make nearly half of uh, the total revenues. These guys are mostly interested in making money. There's the fun side, of course, and the sense of being creative, but the focus is on revenues. So we've also identified the, uh, let's call it favorite platform, or the platform most closely associated with each cluster. So as you can see for these guys, iOS is the leading platform. The guys on the top, the two segments, uh, with the orange, with explorers and hobbyists, uh, they tend to make the least amount of money. Goes without saying, they're not interested in monetization. And these guys are in it to just for the fun of it. They want to see what's new and they want to see how their app will work on a different platform or a different setup or a different device. So these guys are experimenting right now with uh, BlackBerry and Windows Phone or uh, Windows 8. The final segment, which is uh, the final cluster, which is comprised of four uh, distinct developer segments, are about reach. So it could be uh, a uh, developer who's interested in uh, adopting a new platform. It could be uh, people unrelated to the mobile industry who are trying to create apps. It's also uh, digital media publishers. And the uh, prime motivator for these segments is uh, eyeballs. So eyeballs on screens, it's extending their reach, and uh, it's all of these uh, boring marketing stuff. So you can see that these guys are, of course, primarily using Android and HTML5. So uh, these two platforms are more closely associated with uh, reach. So this was the uh, brief look at developer economics. The full report is available for free at developereconomics.com. So uh, I've given you a lot of uh, stats and figures. You can now take uh, your time and digest everything with a more perhaps thorough explanation. So feel free to download the reports. And you can get in touch with me directly at matos at visionmobile.com or on Twitter at visionmobile. So looking forward to any questions you may have. So... Uh, it's a question about methodology. When you do developer revenue, um, was that sort of factored to individual developers or to, to teams? This is based on uh, a sample of 6,000 uh, mobile developers from across the globe. 
what we did in order to eliminate bias is identify the largest campaigns uh, which had a closer median result uh, between themselves. So we had a lot of channels, we had a lot of marketing partners and some uh, sponsors as well. But in order to eliminate this bias, uh, we tried to uh, identify uh, unbiased channels through which we conducted the bulk of uh, the questions. I guess what I meant was when, when I look at the report and I see developer revenue, I'm trying to figure out, are you saying individual developers? Yes, yeah, that's individual One developers, person. yes, but that's on average, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. So uh, there are the big players as well in there. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, in your studies, did you also analyze about uh, the developers using some of this cross-platform uh, application development tool? You know, um, this has been actually the focus of two of our previous reports. So we have a dedicated cross-platform tool uh, report from 2012 available on our website. And we also dedicated the uh, Q1 2013 report, the developer economics one, to cross-platform tools. So uh, if you want to take a look uh, at the full report, you can uh, find not just uh, the number of players, but also the mindshare, like we saw the platform mindshare, you can see it for cross-platform tools. Thank you. Other questions? Hi. Oh, Hi. Sorry. Um, I love the slides you had and the numbers and was wondering if um, we could get the slides somewhere or if all that prepared like it was is also in the book or... Uh, uh, I don't know what uh, Telefonica <laughs> will. They're probably uploading this, but get okay. in touch with me and I'll uh, just give you everything you need. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? So, thank you all for your attention. It was great to be here and thanks for the invitation. See you next time.